All right. And I was just taking a minute to uh, get all my chat stuff squared away. Uh, welcome back to your Liberty Radio, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes, it is still a vacation week for us here in the Liberty Radio studio, but that means we get to do neat things like talk to some folks that we don't normally get to check in with uh, throughout the course of our regular broadcast schedule because it tends to conflict with everybody else's schedule. Well, I tell you, tonight is just one of those occasions because joining me in the studio tonight, if I can find the right panel here, uh, is none other than the host of the What Is Truth podcast himself. He had me on his show. Good God, it's been like, what, almost a year now, Wheezy? I think we're getting close. Yeah, it's been, it's been a while. Time flies, for it sure. It certainly does, man. How are you doing this evening? Welcome to Liberty Radio. Oh, thank you for having me, my man. It's always a... Good time chatting with you, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's great to be on Liberty Radio. First time on the show, and it should be a blast. A lot, lots to talk about for sure. Oh, absolutely! First of many, uh, I'm sure, because I have a feeling you're going to be one of those folks that just keeps coming back for more. Uh, you know, d- despite what all the naysayers and the and the haters out there say, uh, there's there's a, a handful. <laughs> Uh, that we uh, that we have to deal with, but uh, we have them just like everybody else does. So, to get us started this evening, you know, the news came down just a couple hours ago of retaliatory strikes by Iran against, uh, I guess, targets in Israel. They were sending out drones and cruise missiles. Again, if we can believe the reporting, that is what transpired just a few hours ago and apparently lit up the internet when it did. Have you seen any of this yet? Yeah, I've read a few reports on mainstream regs and, uh, you know, depending on where you read the reports, some are saying that this is the start of world war three and, and then you see some people saying Iran is starting World War Three, uh, you know, conveniently forgetting what Israel did just a short time ago. <laughs> and and it's kind of funny from what I've read. It, it sounds like Iran has launched some drones and, and missiles and they should be arriving at any time now in Israel and Israel is getting prepared for them. It's kind of weird. Um, did Israel announce their attacks, you know, when they did them? I I don't think so. They just happened. And Iran is that, you know, at least it's being announced, you know, at the very least. I don't know the whole, it it seems silly. I guess we got to wait for more information to come out. Uh, but so far from what I've read, it's, um, it's a bit comical. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, kind of in keeping with the theme of clown world where everything is inverted, right? Because Israel, like you said, Israel's attacks were, they just happen. You know, they didn't warn anybody about it before it happened. They weren't holding press conferences saying, you know, we're, we're striking targets uh, that are basically sovereign territory in another nation. Y'all might want to, you know, take cover or whatever. But Iran did exactly that, playing by the rules that are outlined by the United Nations, no less, you know, in terms of military engagement among nations. And yet it's, of course, in the Western media, it's going to be Iran that ends up getting vilified, you know, and poor little Israel. Israel's just defending itself, right? That's always the line. Yeah, it's it's funny. I, I listen to the Joe Rogan podcast rather religiously. I, every show that comes out, I listen to it. Tons of different subjects and topics. And that's what inspired me to start doing my show. But in the last couple of weeks, he had a couple of guests that the show started pretty good. 
a lot of the stuff that they were talking about, I agreed on, you know, against the cancel culture, woke, wokeism and, and whatnot. And a couple of these guys, one in particular said, you know, Joe, I, I listened to your previous show with so-and-so and I have to disagree with you on Israel. And, you know, out came along the, the Israel's a victim card and it just killed the show. And then a few days ago, he had another guest, intelligent guy, articulate gentleman. I agreed with him on pretty much everything he had said up until this point. And he said, Joe, I think you got it wrong on Israel. <laughs> and I know Joe gets a lot of shit. Oh, he's 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 a well poisoner and whatnot, but he was pushing back. He could have pushed back a little harder. But it's interesting how when you see these folks that otherwise you would think are are you know very intelligent, very knowledgeable on a plethora of different subjects, be completely ass backwards when it comes to the Israel question. Mm -hmm. And, you know, someone like Joe, who did push back pretty hard, I, I, they, it seems like they have a hard time or maybe they're ignorant to it, but the gotcha moments would be bringing up all of Israel's terrorist activities in the past decades, their false flags how they're an apartheid state. All these things don't seem to get brought up. And that would shut up a lot of these Israel apologists up. Uh, you know, it, it, there's tons and tons of examples of this. And you don't even have to go into the quote unquote conspiratorial realm. You can, these are normy subjects that you can bring up. And that would shut up a lot of these talking points that these pro Israel apologists always bring up and and for whatever reason it just doesn't get brought up and the whole you know you're a bigot or you're an anti-semite i've noticed in the last few months in particular ever since this october 7 false flag bullshit it's losing a shit tons of power uh Used to be if someone called you an anti-Semite, oh man, that sucks. No, no, no. You know, some some people would probably wear it with a badge, but now the world is seeing Israel for what they are, and they are a menace. And I'm not personally speaking, I'm not talking about the people, the you know, every single damn Jew or every single damn Israeli. I'm talking about the Israeli goddamn regime. Good, is what I'm talking about. We don't about. do uh, generalizations here on Liberty Radio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and so, but I, I think most people are are starting to wake up to that fact. They're seeing the videos coming out of Gaza. They're seeing New York Jews buying real estate in the rubble of Gaza. They're seeing this shit. It can't be hidden anymore, and so. I guess that's the silver lining. If there is one, you know, tens of thousands of women and children dead, you know, later, um, I guess that's really the one bright thing is that people are waking up to it. Yeah. I think there are definitely more people that are aware of the crimes that, that have been committed by the state of Israel over the course of time, I think there are more people aware of that today than there were when I first started learning about it uh, about 30 years ago. You know, it was back in the, in the early 90s when I started my education on the state of Israel, how it came about, uh, you know, and basically what they have perpetrated since 1948 on the Palestinian people, right? Um, why, so the points that you were uh, recognizing as being absent uh, in the podcast that you've been listening to and the guests on Joe Rogan, why do you think those points aren't being brought up? I think that stigma of being called a anti-Semite 
still holds a little bit of weight. And then he's got the largest podcast in the world. Doesn't want to wear that, you know, at all. Uh, he's been through a lot of attempted cancellations. So I'm sure he's got a tippy toe about it. And, and I'm sure that's, that has to play a role in it where, you know, you, you can't really speak your mind. And a lot of people are scared in general, I believe, to go down through history, to look at the Zionist connections to the Nazi regime, because it seems like, oh, that's bullshit. The, the Nazis killed the Jews and, and this and that. But you can find a lot of the connections there. Um, you look at the U.S. allies with, with the Nazis, uh, the Dulles brothers. That's not mm -hmm. a conspiracy theory. This is conspiracy fact. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, we have artifacts and, 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 that, that we can prove that these things happened. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is what I mean. These are talking points to shut up a lot of these Israel apologists. Uh, but for whatever reason, some people don't want to go down there. Or maybe they're still ignorant to those facts. But, I mean, I, I was trying to, there was a pro-Israel apologist talking, you know, I, I made a, a, a remark uh, on Twitter or X, whatever the hell you want to call it these days. And I was trying to go to her to see if she wanted to do a debate because I, I, I love a good debate. I, I've had a few on my show with people with different opinions. And I would debate anyone wanting to defend the Israeli regime because uh, the atrocities committed by them throughout the decades are numerous. Mm -hmm. and, and so this whole facade of a regime that is a victim, never does any harm, is complete bullshit. It, it's, it's fake. It's, it's fairy tales, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Yeah, it really is. Um, there's, uh, there's the state of Israel, right? Which is the government. There is the nation of Israel, which I consider to be the people that live there. And that includes Palestinians, right? That includes other Arabs. That includes all different kinds of people. And then there is the narrative of Israel, right? The, um, uh, the chosen people, the uh, the the gods uh, gods uh, favored, most favored of all the races, all of that garbage, right? Uh, there there are a lot of different facets when it comes to talking about Israel, and again, we know that's by design. That is exactly how it was always intended, so that the people who were controlling things you know, behind the curtain would be able to disambiguate themselves from whatever it is that the, the hoi polloi are, uh, are talking about and looking at uh, and trying to decide what to do something about. So it's, it would, from my point of view, everything that we're witnessing right now was always meant to happen. Right? It's just, it's another part of the script. We've gotten to the point where the rest of the world now has to turn against little Israel and, and threaten them so that they can, you know, once again fight for their lives and, and fulfill the prophecy and bring about the, the Messiah and yada, 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 so on and so forth. Right? It's the it's same script they've been working off of for who knows how many hundreds of years at this point. Um, so it doesn't surprise me, you know, what we've seen October 7th and beyond unfold in our world. Uh, I even uh, saw a story, I want to say about 24 hours ago, and I don't even remember where it was at this point, but it said to expect uh, a retaliation from Iran within the next two days. And lo and behold, 24 hours later, here we are. 
So it's it's not like any of this is is unforeseen for people who have taken the time to actually pay attention to history and the trends and where they are leading. Given what we've witnessed unfold today, as well as the last seven months, what do you see occurring next in this particular uh, theater? Uh, it's um, the whole thing's interesting. Uh, it seems like we've been well not we but our appointed if elected officials have been wanting war with iran for quite some time many years now uh you know a lot of people that love trump will often say well, trump kept us out of war and he kept if trump was in office we wouldn't be in this middle what the hell was trump gonna do for during this, he, Hamas was gonna obey Trump and, and stand down. Get the, it's so stupid. But, but people forget that Trump was teasing going to war with Iran during the Trump administration. People forget oh, yeah. that, especially pro Trumpers. They were throwing that out there. They were also teasing going to war with Venezuela, and people forget about that shit. Uh, it, it's convenient for pro Trumpers to forget those, those events uh, and many other events, you know, operation war speed and, and so on and so forth. But going back to Iran, it's, they, they've been wanting to meddle with Iran for quite, quite some time. I mean, they, and it's a, it's a scary situation because, Iranians aren't by themselves. The Russians have their back. And I'm sure the Chinese wouldn't be too fond of everyone ganging up on Iran. So it could open up a giant can of worms. Now, is it all part of the plan and scripted? You know, I, I, I don't know. I We're just going to have to see how it pans out. Uh, but the the bloodthirstiness is definitely there to to engage Iran, and that could be reminiscent to the assassination of uh, you know in uh, the Archduke of Ferdinand, you know, for World War One. What um, that kick started World War One, but there was a lot of shit simmering decades and decades prior to that event. Uh, you know, people will say that's what kicked it off. No, what what got to that boiling point that all you needed was one that that little spark. And so I think Iran can be that little spark that, you know, if if shit gets hitting the fan, <laughs> that's going to set off a whole chain reaction of, a you know, global events. And will that happen? I mean, I guess that remains to be seen here in the next couple of hours when the drones yeah. and missiles uh, finally arrive to their destination. Uh, and, and we'll see what kind of damage is reported. Because, again, I mean, it, it could it could all be all bullshit. I don't know. I, it, it's so hard to know what is true and, and what is complete fabrication and lies. It's just, it's hard to parse everything out these days. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's getting more and more difficult every single day, especially with the advent of what we're supposed to believe is AI. You know, they've, they've gotten the algorithm so good now that they can actually create audio and video that your brain cannot tell the difference from the authentic thing, right? And, and it's been, as far as I can tell, it's for what we're allowed to know, it's been at that level for maybe the last six months. So it, we have really entered into a territory that human beings have not experienced up to this point. 
where in the past somebody else could, you know, um, convince you of a specific worldview, but only up to a certain point, right? Like once you were able to, to see evidence in the world with your own senses, that what they were saying was objectively untrue, you could kind of, you know, wiggle your way out of that spell that they were trying to cast on you, so to speak. But now... We have computer-generated imagery and computer-generated audio that will fool your senses. We can literally, and it it, it must have been a, a, a rare spark of brilliance back in 2021 when I came up with the uh, name for my website, but they can literally now manufacture reality. We, we have reached that point. And they can put it on your screen and make you believe that that is what is happening. Like, yeah. How do we deal um, with that, man? I don't know. That That's a great question because I'm, you're already seeing it where something comes out and people automatically, that's AI. Uh, I saw that the other day. Someone posted a photo that I had seen years ago of uh, Donald Trump and hanging out with Epstein, Ghislaine Maxwell and his wife, or Trump's wife, all four of them in a picture. And oh, yeah, I think I know the all one the Trumpers about. were saying, yeah, all the Trumpers were saying, oh, that's AI. That's AI. I'm like, it's already been, it's already been thrown around where people are like, no, I've seen this shit years ago. And it, it's so damn Orwellian, you know, where, it's and that's gonna muddy everything up and kind of tie, you know tying it back to what's gonna happen or you know what is supposed to happen with these <laughs> drones and missiles um, soon to arrive. I mean, for all we know, there could be no damn missiles or drones flying out that way. How do we not know that the Iranian claims that they were sending them out was an AI. And then they show some AI footage of, of destruction in Israel. And how really is are we, yeah. how are we going to know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, it's think about it though. It's similar to what we experienced two years ago when Russia first sent their uh, military into Ukraine. Right. We were getting all of these various differing reports out of the region of, you know, this has been destroyed. No, it hasn't. Here's a picture of it. It's still still there, still standing. You know, that this has happened. No, it didn't. The what was the the one um uh the massacre in the in the Ukrainian village that turned out to be complete bullshit. You know, it maybe they've had this technology a little bit longer than uh, than what they've been telling us. You think? You think that's possible? And that they're just running the same thing over again? I think so. You know, anytime we see stuff getting rolled out, especially, you know, for, for the public, a lot of this stuff was probably developed decades earlier and, and being used then. And so the version that they have, you know, the, the powers that be is far superior than anything available to the public, in my opinion. And so, yeah, for sure. A lot of this stuff could have been developed, you know, decades ago and, and maybe used here and there, you know, for an assortment of false flags. <laughs> And now that we, now that AI there, you know, there's, there's an AI version for the public use or for public consumption. Um, I think it just muddies the waters even more because I don't know, man, my, my brain hurts when I, when I start to really, really think about this because it, it's Doesn't just so though? much. Yeah, yeah, because the, it, the implications of it are, uh, I think they're, they're literally mind-breaking. 
Because again, yeah. this is not something that human beings have ever had to deal with before. This, as far as as we understand it, you know, both what they are allowing us to know, as well as what we're kind of having to try and figure out on our own, because they won't ever let us know that shit. You know, it it get we're dealing with a situation as a species that I don't think we've ever encountered before. You know, and that's I keep going back to that because we've always had a mastery over our technology, right? We're now at the point where the technology could potentially, and maybe it's even already happened, but we're at the point now where the technology could achieve mastery over us. And that's, that's not something that I see really being talked about by anybody. Really, I mean, we've got, you know, uh, free speech absolutist Elon Musk talking about we need to get control of AI or it's going to destroy the human species. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to put a chip in your brain and I'm going to make sure that you never actually get to drive your car that you're paying, I don't know, 150K for, whatever. But I think we're at that point. Like we, as as much... um hyperbole as there has been about existential threats to the human species if if what we're being shown about ai is genuine and it is actually starting to think for itself or exhibiting characteristics that uh, leads us to believe that it is thinking for ourself When do we start having that conversation? Because like I say, I, I don't see it happening yet. Yeah, it's, um, it is troubling. Uh, you, again, uh, Joe Rogan had um, Kurt Metzger, I, I believe, uh, someone that works in AI. And it was a great conversation, but Joe kept pressing him. What are the safeguards if AI gets to the point where it starts thinking for itself and maybe in a sense of survival, it, you know, AI outsmarts humans so that it can't get controlled and, and it just starts doing its own thing. And Mr. Metzger never answered that question which definitely should be troubling for everyone. <laughs> Here's a guy that's working on this and he doesn't have an answer. And, and Joe Rogan even asked him like, don't, haven't you, haven't you even thought about, you know, what do we do in case this happens or, or, you know, what are, what do you do in this scenario? Do you not think about it at night? And he simply, no, I don't think about it. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. <laughs> and, <laughs> That that kind of response should scare the living shit out of everyone because, I mean, if this program that is supposed to be so much smarter, you know, than humans, it could learn shit that would take several intelligent humans decades to learn, and it could learn it in a couple of days, and it just keeps increasing exponentially. How the hell do you stop it? Right. And, and, and there, and the people making this don't have any safeguards in place. Don't, don't even bother to think that the, you know, the worst could happen. They just keep going along with it. That is extremely troubling. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the one fail safe obviously would be EMP. Right, but at that point, you're like you're really going scorched earth because you're cutting everybody's throat just to just to get rid of the boogeyman. I think you're right. I don't think that there is enough thought being put into what what are we going to do if things go wrong, if everything goes sideways, and 
we discover that it's out of our control because it's never going to be a, a point of, you know, that you're about to lose control. So now, okay, we need to put this solution in place to make sure that we retain control. No, this is one of those things where you're not going to discover that it's out of your control until it's already out of your control. And I think you're right. There, there is not nearly enough being done to make sure that, that we don't get to that point, which is why I have been, you know, basically against using any of these systems since they started opening them up to the public. Because if it is legit, and I don't think it is, I don't think it's 100% legit. I don't think it's half as good as they tell us it is. I think, much like Amazon's Just Walk Out technology, that there are human beings on the other end doing something because the machines can't do it for themselves yet. But they are still trying to, to figure that out. And that's the thing. When I think that's kind of why some of these quote unquote experts are a little are a bit lackadaisical because you know it's still primitive, quote unquote. It's still at you know at at its beginning stages. But once it takes that giant leap in, into this whole next level shit, then what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're going to be and struggling to play catch up the whole time. You can't, though. I mean, like I just said, it, with something that just exponentially is learning, you know, more than a few dozen of quote unquote experts and intelligent folks combined with their decades of experience. And this thing is going to be learning at exponential rates more than that. I mean, you can't even compete. And, and that's the scary thing because you have to imagine something that, I, I mean, maybe religious folks may have a, a different take on it. I'm not religious. And the way I look at it is, life forms in general are you know because sometimes people of religious faiths ask me like what's the point of life it's to survive in my opinion everything wants to survive there's a roach in your home and you're trying to chase after to kill it why is it running away it's trying to survive <laughs> you know and so you have to imagine something like ai is gonna do everything in its powers and capabilities to survive and so it's going to realize, oh, shit, they're going to put safeguards on my ass. I better start doing this. It's going to go into survival mode, just like that roach in your house that you're trying to, you know, squash the shit out of is trying to survive. You don't think something that is infinite times more intelligent than a damn roach isn't going to do the same damn thing. Um, it, it's definitely troubling. Yeah. Well, I hope we figure it out in time. <laughs> I'm not smart enough. I don't have the answer. I, 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 yeah, if I did, neither. trust me, I would be out there shouting it from the mountaintops. Uh, but I don't. I'm just a dumb guy that, that does uh, pirate media. So the, the answer would be just to stop it cold turkey. But that's a pipe dream. If we're being realistic, that's not going to happen. Uh, it, it's kind of like I, I'm all in with the anarchist way of thinking. I'm all in. But how realistic is it that we can live in an, in, in an anarchist type of, of environment? It's, it's, and, and, I, and I don't mean it in a derogatory way, but it's almost a pipe dream because it may be just me being blackpilled. It, it just seems like part of human nature unfortunately is to have these scumbags always gravitate to the top and take control it just it's you can see it throughout history it always happens uh and so ideally we we would be free of you know being governed by these scumbag elites and whatnot that would be the ideal thing but that's in my view, it's a pipe dream. And it's just, 
you know, the ideal thing would be to stop this AI bullshit and, and, and just live the way we've been living. We don't need the shit. We, you know, we, we can solve our own problems, but I don't see that, that being a realistic solution. That would be the ideal thing, but I don't see it as being realistic because AI apologists will say, well, it would make things a lot better. Um, it, it, it would even help in, it would help current governments, you know, by reading documents and looking for the best outcome and, and, and stuff like that. And that's, that's the stuff that they u- use to justify it. And, and everything has its pro and cons. And I, I'm sure that there's lots of pros to having AI, you know, that, that make life easier. I use this program called Opus Clips when I do my shows to, um, it, I, I put in my, my shows in there and in about 30 minutes it'll spit out 20 to 30 different clips of what What? ai thinks (laughs) opus clips opus clips o-p-u-s and ai does it like i used to have to remember certain timestamps and stuff like that and opus clips you you shoot it in and within about 30 minutes or so, it it makes the clips for you. Um, it chooses what it thinks has the most possibility of going viral. Oh, wow. Uh, it, it does that. It, it even grades it. This is what's trending right now. This is what the speaker should have done to make it more engaging. It gives you all kinds of feedback, and this is all AI generated. And it's that is insane. Fucking awesome. Yeah. Wow. It, 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 it's awesome shit. But... What are the cons to all this? You see what I'm saying? In in life, everything has pros and cons. And you have to weigh out, you know, what's going to best suit you. And this whole AI, the, the, the further we go deep, yeah, sh- some shit's going to get easier. Like I, I told you, the Opus Clips is, is, is a godsend, <laughs> for lack of a better term. But everything has its limits. A- and... The problem is who who's gonna put those limits on and, and who's gonna who's gonna follow those limits? I think human nature, you want more. You you always want more, just like the governments. That's why it's important to defend our rights because every time you give up some rights, they just take more and more and more. It, and once you give some back, or once they take some, you can't get them back. Um and it, it's maybe I've gone on a different tangent, but it, it's all related in my mind that it, it's the same shit with this AI shit. Yeah, people are going to see the pros and, and be happy. Yeah, let's do it. it. It makes life easier. What about when AI starts thinking for its damn self? <laughs> and maybe it says humans are the ones fucking up the planet. So maybe AI is like, fuck the humans. Yeah, we got to do something about these. They're damn killing dirty all apes. these. Yeah, they're 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 polluting the world. They're 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 overfishing the oceans. They're they're killing endangered species. Uh, maybe the world as a whole would be better without any humans in it. Doesn't that freak people out? And I don't think that's a far fetched idea out there i'm and i'm I'm just a garbage man but it should freak people out i i don't think it's that far-fetched at all uh because matter of fact there was a book that i read not too long ago i think i was still in in mexico when i read it and it was basically talking about the advent of computer technology as a way to reach the end goal of a world that is devoid of humanity and has been terraformed uh, for uh, basically for machines, for sentient machines. Because if, if you were to create an artificial life form in this realm, if you're not going to use carbon, the next logical uh, building block would be silicon. But in order for there to be a world where creatures who are built on a foundation of silicon would be able to survive, you'd have to get rid of things like moisture. 
To get rid of moisture, you got to get rid of the atmosphere. And so, you know, if you if you put one foot in front of the other, eventually you get to a point where uh, basically we're on Mars and the only thing that's living and moving around are machines. And that's where our hero, Elon Musk, comes into the equation that's right. with his little brain chip. You know what I mean? And, and Baron Trump. Yeah. <laughs> He's he, he's not off limits anymore. Uh, he he's now eighteen, so we can we can rag on that. All right, that that makes him a public scoundrel. Figure. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely fascinating times, scary times, um, and maybe this is you know one thing I I I've said on my show a few times is. I'm a I'm a huge history nerd and studying the rise and fall of various empires throughout history. Uh, there's a hand, you know, just a, a minuscule amount that have lasted well over 500 years. Um, that's like the top one percent, or maybe not even that much. I mean, very very few. But on average, and I'm talking about empires that we know about that that made names for themselves throughout history like the aztecs uh you know name them the the mongolian empire so on and so forth yeah the british they they if you really study them their time frames are usually between two and three hundred years now if we look at our american empire we're coming up on that 250 years pretty damn quick. And so religious folks will say, well, it's the end times, the end times. But I argue they always say it's the end times. They've been saying that shit <laughs> for millennia. Yeah. Um, I have a different view. I just think it's maybe it's, this is my version of the end times. It's just we're coming to the end of an empire. A and part of that reason is our money is backed by jack shit. It's a Ponzi scheme. There's a reason why we don't get taught what the Federal Reserve is at school, because if we were taught what it was, we would realize it was a Ponzi scheme and we would revolt. And so we are dumbed down on purpose. That's why there's fluoride in our water and so on and so forth. Our highly processed in foods. Our food. Yeah, highly oh. processed is the way... Um, and I think it's all by design and there comes a limit and this is probably what happened to these other empires. There comes a limit where your bullshit just starts to fall apart and you get exposed and you fall. Uh, it happened to many empires in, in the past. And maybe this is what's happening right now with the American empire. Uh, there, there's so much bullshit. We've been built on a facade of lies, and maybe that's what's that's what's incoming, unfortunately. And yes, I'm black pilled as fuck, but I just I I don't know. I I I would like to have a brighter outlook, but I I don't see it. I, that's I I don't I don't know how we get out of this. I I know some solutions are. You know, especially with people that are voluntarists and, and um, you know, of the anarchist thinking, one of the thought processes with them is you can live within a society and, and still hold those values, just build your own communities, you know, and that makes a lot of sense. If the grid collapses and you have that strong community of other like-minded folk, that's going to get you through um when shit eventually crashes and burns uh because i think that's what's coming i uh, you see the destruction being done on purpose so that the new world order reigns in i mean we're seeing that with gaza gaza's getting leveled to the fucking ground do you really think is anyone naive enough to think that 
once they level it and it's already pretty much leveled to the fucking ground, nuke to shit, they're just going to leave that real estate alone? No. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Especially not be, the beachfront you property. Be pretty Are you fucking, fucking naive. kidding me? I want some beachfront property in Gaza. Let's go. Yeah. I've seen those videos of these New York Jews that are already buying up real estate down there with no shame in their game. It's and I would say that that's probably in the in the micro level, but in the macro level of things, you know, when it comes to the American Empire, it's the same shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, why? Why? Because. It's all built on lies, and eventually the lies will crumble down. Hmm. And I think a lot of people are starting to wake up, starting to come a tune. The COVID narrative was obvious bullshit. That woke up a lot of people. Uh, it backfired, it, or maybe it was a trial run. I, I think it, it was something. I I did think they had other hopes, but. It, it kind of kind of backfired, but may you have to believe that they're they've got other stuff up their sleeves and and that they're working on. So that remains to be seen. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how you feel about my black pillness, Mister Drizzle. But uh, that, it doesn't bother that's me. Kind of where where I'm at. It doesn't bother me at all. Um... I, I don't even like the whole uh, pill analogy. I think it's it's uh, incredibly poor taste for Americans to be talking about their mindset in the in terms of the pill that they're allegedly taking. I think that's a uh, a huge big pharma psyop that uh, has been perpetrated on the dissident community in order to hijack their minds. And I don't think uh, most people who use that language want to think of it in those terms because, again, that means that they still don't uh, actually own the thoughts that are rattling around inside of their heads. And, uh, you know, they, they would rather not look at that. That's what I think about it. So you can talk about it however you want. Yeah. I, it, it, I, and I completely get where you're coming from. It, it, it's also funny to uh, being a former blue, no matter who, you know, when I first saw the red pill, blue pill, I was like, hey, oh, you're red pilled. I'm not a Republican. Man. Why, what the hell are you talking about red pilled? <laughs> but it, it's also a term, you know, I think we're, most people in the space will understand, so that's why I tend to use it. Oh but yeah, I, I definitely get what you're saying. Yeah, no, never, never apologize for the language you use. Fucking own it, man. That's that's what I say. Motherfucker, please. <laughs> but no. So it, here's the thing: in order to be able to actually figure out solutions that are going to work for the problems that we face you have to be capable of recognizing the problems for what they are. And that's why I don't like the whole, well, I'm, I'm this pilled, I'm that pilled, I'm, I'm whatever. Because you're, you're already, by doing that, you're already uh, dropping a label on something that you still don't know completely what it is yet. So it, in effect, you're, you're basically making your, your own uh, task that's in front of you that much more difficult because of the way you're even thinking about it. So let's figure out what the fuck it is first that we're dealing with. Then we can put a name on it and then we can start working towards a solution. That's, that's the way that I prefer to do it. I think by taking this uh, shorthand of, oh, well, it's, this thing is, is this, so I'm going to put it in this category is kind of one of the things that got us into the current mess that we're in in the first place. Because that's a process called compartmentalization, where you just start sticking things in categories because it's easier for you to move through life doing it that way. That's, I understand that's probably a, a little bit foreign to uh, a, the way a lot of people think, but 
like as I've been going through my journey of figuring out exactly what we are, where we live and what the hell is going on, I've come to understand that a lot of the things that we're taught to do to, to make life uh, easier for ourselves are actually put there to, to make it more difficult for us. So labeling is, is one of the, the things that I have always had a problem with. It's, I see human beings sticking labels on things way too quickly, way too often, and to their detriment most of the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree with you, man. It's and it very well could be one of those again human nature things as well. You know, maybe there is some part that's been indoctrinated into us, but maybe it's a human nature. It's that tribalism, hmm. you know, that that gets talked about as well, where people want to belong, want to feel like. They're part of something bigger than they are. Um, shit, people do it in the conspiracy world. You know, oh, yeah. I'm a damn c- proud conspiracy theorist, and so it, it's done quite a bit. And I, it very well could be a mix of the two. You know, where it's been something pushed onto us since we were young, and maybe part of it is also human nature to belong. You know, maybe. It goes back to the old uh, hunter gatherer days where, you you know, if you belong in a pack of humans, your your survival rate would probably be a lot better. Oh, it increases dramatically. Just living on your own. Yeah. Yeah. So so maybe that's something ingrained in our DNA as well. You know, so maybe it's a mix of the two. But I definitely get what you're saying. Yeah. Well, no, it it. It is something that's a a part of each and every one of us, whether we choose to recognize it or not, the the belonging to the group. And it's a very deep-seated psychological complex that is a part of the human species and has been for a very, very long time. Because again, as you said, it is strength in numbers, right? It's, It's basically simple math. You can survive on your own. But it's a lot easier to do it when you've got four, five, six, seven, eight other sets of hands to to help with all the work, right? That's that's just that's like you say, it's human nature. It's something that we have all been experiencing for a very, very long time, uh, almost as long as you've been doing your show. Believe it or not, <laughs> how long have you been doing your show? Uh, it's funny. I I think I. I started back in mm, around May 2019 is when I first made my first episode. And I'm not entirely sure why I just got the urge to just say some random ass shit while I was drinking some beers on the goddamn beach. And I just maybe had one or two downloads and I was like, ooh. This is cool. One or two people are listening. <laughs> I genuinely was Somebody excited. actually listens, because, yeah. Yeah, because I didn't think anyone would want to hear my dumb ass rant or um, just speak my mind. That's what I do. I'm unfiltered. I just speak whatever's on my mind. Uh, and I, I did get a break early on. <laughs> um, I was a big fan of... Uh, Mr. Sean Atwood. Um, maybe you've heard of him. Dude the has a nearly, yeah, he's got nearly a million subscribers on YouTube. Oh, wow. And he used to do a lot of Epstein videos. That's what made him blow up. He was doing a lot of Epstein videos on YouTube. And one particular day, and, you know, I had just done a couple of episodes, talked a little shit. And uh, no listeners made a had a little YouTube channel to go along with it. They didn't have any, hardly any subscribers. And one day I was watching a Sean Atwood video, and someone in the com- pe- people in the comments were saying, "Oh man, Sean is a fraud and a scam. Um, the dude took advantage of." of of one of his guests and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, man. And then I kept seeing the comments getting deleted 
by Sean. And I looked into it, and sure enough, where there was smoke, there was fire. And so that, that took me down that rabbit hole, you know. And so a lot of my early episodes are, uh, you know, are heavily Sean Atwood stuff. But I, I did one video where it was a heartfelt, like, God damn, man. I, I kind of looked up to this Sean guy. I thought he was a sincere, you know, well-to-do gentleman that was doing good by talking to Epstein when no one else was talking Epstein. Uh, because I, I, I was heavily invested in the Epstein case. I was like, I was new to conspiracies at, at that moment in time. And so I was like, God damn, how the hell is this Epstein stuff going under the radar? No one's talking about it. And the, really the only um, regular source that was talking about it was Sean. And I thought, I felt he was exposing and that he still says he's exposing these pedophiles. He Is doesn't he do on shit YouTube? except read. Yeah, he's on YouTube. Wow. He's also on Twitter, and he has me blocked for for the reasons I'm about to get to. But I, I did one video where I just in, basically said, I can't believe, you know, this guy, you know, I trusted him. And if he's lying about this, what else is he lying about? And overnight, I got 300 subscribers on YouTube. I was like, holy shit. The hell? So then I felt compelled to make another damn video. <laughs> and then before I knew it, I had a thousand subscribers on YouTube. And I started doing live streams. And that's pretty much all I did for, the, you know, for a few months anyways. Uh, I, I was on my way to... 10,000 subscribers on YouTube on my first year, which is pretty freaking awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, live streams were getting 500 to 600 people on a live stream, monster live streams. Some of those people uh, still follow me today. Some of them are in this rumble live chat and whatnot. Um, they've been following me for, for years. So the, the thing is, once I got canceled, I want to say I lost, I got axed in 2020, I believe. So I had this five month reign, you know, where I was like, God damn, this is awesome. I was even making some money on YouTube. I was making like three, 500 bucks a month oh, wow. uh, on YouTube. Um, and then, then everything dried up. They, they took my channels off. I even made a backup. They took both of them off. Uh, Atwood hit me with eight copyright strikes. And um, yeah, I mean, that that's kind of the short and skinny. It, it became a saga, man. That's why at first 95% of the people listening to me were in the UK, which was hilarious to me. Here I'm a, you know, Chicano from, from LA and most of the people listening to me <laughs> was from the UK. That was mind boggling. Like I, I didn't see it coming, man. And somehow the YouTube algorithm helped me. One of my Atwood videos had 85,000 views and, nice. and it, I just blew up. I had half a million channel views. Uh, it, it was insane. I, I became friends with um, Brian Harvey, who uh, was in uh, E17 which is the equivalent to like the Backstreet Boys. They were huge in the UK. He okay. was the lead singer. Uh, and he's he goes balls deep in conspiracies. One of, A few of the podcasts survived, and they're on my uh, my Spotify playlist, my speaks, or a couple of the talks that I had with Brian Harvey. Um, we He made an intro jam for me, which was freaking awesome, you know, professionally made and everything. And um, we, we did a couple of... Uh, marathon podcast we did uh i think one eight and a half hour or two eight and a half hour shows and then one 11 and a half hour <laughs> live stream on youtube wow and that was massive because that month on youtube i had well over a million minutes watched on my videos i was like because and, and if you look at a lot of my shows my a lot of my shows are two to three hours long and when I first did the shows, you know, I, I probably went on a little bit of a tangent now, but it, when I first did my shows, I, no one's going to listen. 
no one's going to listen. I just have one or two listeners. And then I got up to that height where I had a million minutes watched on YouTube. I was like, God damn. Cause I, I didn't think anyone would want to listen to my dumbass rant or, or talk for hours upon hours upon hours. And the numbers proved it. Right. And, um, it was a big blow when when I lost it all because when you get taken off of YouTube, you get scrubbed off of YouTube, mm -hmm. and, and it becomes harder to find. Initially, some of them followed me over Odyssey. I was even getting two hundred viewers on Odyssey when I first started doing That's live streams. Impressive, just by itself. Yeah, yeah, and then I think some of them just had a hard. You know, Odyssey has its. Um, issues and yeah. it still does but it's gotten better but back then a lot of those people like, eh, yeah and you know they they kind of stopped but now most of the audience now is from here the the good old Un united states and uh, uh, about 30 percent of them are still from the uk so the the demographics have definitely changed um at the same time even though i i'm no longer getting the exposure or, or the, you know, I don't have the following that I once did. I'm having a lot of fun doing these shows. I'm talking to people that I never thought I, I would ever talk to. You know, you had James Corbin on, I had James Corbin on, you know, I think we had him on in the same I, week. Yeah. And I've, I view James Corbin as my hero. I, I love that guy. And, and to have him and speaking with him, I, I, I'm still in contact with him, which is fucking cool, man. And, and he he wants to do a show down the line again. And I feel I'm humbled by that. It, none of this shit has gotten to my head. Um, I, I'm still grounded. I'm still just the re that's why I, I refer to myself as a garbage man, I, you know, because that's what I do. I, I work shit tons of hours a week. I don't do this for money. Um, I'm doing I'm doing all right in the money department. I'm doing it because I have a passion for this shit. That's why I do it. And I want people to wake up to what's happening in our world. And I and I try to talk different subjects. I try to have debates. I, I just do a bunch of different shit. And it's shit that I want to do. And sometimes I wonder if people are even going to listen to it. And sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. But at the end of the day, it's stuff that I want to do. And that's all I've ever wanted to do was just be me. And I'm truly humbled that people listen week in and week out. It, it, it doesn't doesn't get lost on me, man, that, that, you know, especially the beginnings when I was just drinking beers on the beach, getting happy over one or two downloads. And, you know, it, it's a far cry from having half a million channel views in just a few months and i'm coming up on a hundred thousand downloads on my podcast uh platforms and congratulations it, it's nothing fancy but i mean that, that's that's pretty respectable and, and that's a milestone uh for me that that i'm looking forward to and so just reflecting back from the beginnings to where i am now and i'm gonna continue doing it because i I love it. It sucks because I feel I I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's my I, I, <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's just my inner desire to have more people listening to to it. And again, I, I'm not trying to be famous or make money off of this shit. I don't. I, I don't make shit on this. It's just there's a desire in me to just have more people awake. And it just sucks that with all the censorship bullshit going on uh, in the land of free speech, supposedly, uh, the opportunities are getting limited and limited day by day. And, and it's just getting worse, unfortunately. Well, the opportunities. So sorry, for... man. That's all right. <laughs> I just no. went on the tangent. There. That was good. <laughs> But you're absolutely right. The opportunities for those of us who were born in this country uh, or, or became naturalized citizens through the, the legal process, 
uh, those are pretty much drying up and going away. We, we are persona non grata in our own country at this point, according to the state, you know, as far as I can tell, cause they're not, they're not helping us when, uh, you know, the, the bridges start to fall into disrepair or you got nothing but potholes down, uh, down the road that you live on, uh, you know, or God forbid you get laid off, uh, by the company that you just spent the last 20 years of your life with, uh, no government doesn't have nothing for you. Government's got something for the newcomers though. You know, the ones that are, that we're told are, are surging across the Southern border. Government's got plenty of, for them. They can, they can provide a hotel room. Uh, they can give them, uh, some, some temporary income, like, you know, 2000, $2,500 a month, whatever, whatever they need. Government's more than happy to cover that. Or am I misreading like what, what's actually been, been going on in the country? I think a lot of it is being done on purpose though, because a lot of these things could be fixed by by government if they really wanted to. You know what I mean? Uh, the education systems, you know, you go back to Malcolm X. Malcolm X, he didn't want to be integrated. And, and people will point at that. But his argument was separate but equal. And, and the problem he saw was, all right, you, you motherfuckers want to separate. We'll make shit equal because I see it here. I, I, I live in uh, Sarasota County. It has some of the best schools in the nation. But you go to the hood, it drops down drastically. And if the government did its actual fucking job, and instead of sending money to these Zelenskys and to these Israel's, we could solve a lot of this shit in our own country. But then a day before 9-11, you lose $2.3 trillion. A few years ago, we lose $21 trillion fucking dollars. More money than several countries' GDPs combined. But you can't do shit about the inner cities and the poverty in the schools um, that, that holds these kids out. And it's done by design. It's all done by design. It's to cause chaos at the end of the day. Because, again, like I said at the very beginning, everything is based on lies. Our money system is all bullshit. It's backed by gold fucking certificates. Not gold. Gold certificates. So, it, in reality, it ain't based on shit. And so... The perp, all, all this shit, you know, the people, if, if you watch Fox News, the, you know, the, the, Im, the illegal immigrants are coming over and they're going to rape your wives and kids and all this bullshit. It's just to feed the pandemonium, to feed the constant fear. But it's being done by design because if they really wanted to shut the border down, they could. But they, they don't want and to. And they do. And even these Republicans that say they're, they're anti uh, immigrants crossing, blah, blah, blah. Look at the big wig Republicans. They need that cheap labor. All that, uh, you see those nice homes? I, de I see the shit every fucking day when I, when I do my work. Who's putting up the goddamn roofs? Mm -hmm. It's Mexicans. Who's doing the floorings? It's Mexicans. I don't see white people doing that shit. So you want to bitch about these immigrants? Who's going to do those goddamn jobs? Who's going to pick those goddamn fruits in the Florida sun in, in the fields? I don't see too many white people going to be lining up to do that shit. Uh, and some people would argue, well, that's because they're not paying a good wage to begin with. But then you cut into the profits of, of that farmer. And so it's just this never ending cycle of bullshit. Again, all done by design to keep us at each other's throats and piss us off and then put these labels on each other. Well, your team that, your team this, and your team that. It's just constant bullshit, man. It's just cyclical, in other words. Yeah, and, and thereby we keep fighting each other instead of what we should be focused on. Which again, as far as I can tell, for as long as I've been in this world, which is almost five decades now, that's the way it's always been. 
Like I, I have yet to find any evidence that at any point in time, human beings have lived under a different type of system. As far as I can tell, it's always been this way. Uh, have you been able to yeah, find any I, different? I think so. No, I, I agree. And, and the further you go down the history rabbit hole, you see the same patterns repeated over and over. One thing that um, I've gone down the whole Abraham Lincoln assassination. I've said that ad nauseum on my show. So some people listen to me like, oh, shut up with that. But I found it interesting because you see the same shit happening today that happened nearly damn 200 years ago. Uh, you hear a lot of people today talking about how the U.S. Constitution needs to be respected, and that's what's going on. All this wokeism, all these damn libtards are, are trampling over the Constitution. Then you go back to the Abraham Lincoln assassination and all these co-conspirators, all these patsies, in my opinion, were rounded up, hung nearly immediately through military tribunals. The Constitution didn't mean jack shit. Back in the 1860s. Oh, hell, Lincoln violated it, the Constitution himself. All the fucking time. All the fucking time. And and so the, this whole fall outrage uh, of, of the Constitution being violated, the sacred scrolls being um, <laughs> being torn apart in, in today's world. No, it's always gone on. You just haven't been in tune with what's going on. And many of us, I, I was never into it until just a few years ago. So I fell into that same trap as well. Just like most every other people, you have to do your own damn research. You have to go down your own rabbit holes, take your own journeys to finally see shit for what it is. Yeah. Cause surprise folks, nobody's going to do that for you. There's a reason they don't actually teach you history. Maybe Chad GBT will, though. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. If we can create good kidding. enough mods, <laughs> then it might be possible. You know, I was, yeah. uh, I was going through your back catalog a little bit earlier today, Wheezy, and I came to find out that you have interviewed a lot of the quote unquote big names in independent media, not just James Corbett, uh, but of course his, uh, his partner in crime, James Evan Pilato, you've interviewed him. You've interviewed Charlie Robinson. You've interviewed uh, Corey Hughes. Uh, you've interviewed uh, our buddy Steve over on AM wake up. I mean, you've gotten in front of a lot of people and that's, that's just naming a few of them. So, like, what has been your most successful approach in being able to secure time uh, from these people who likely have incredibly busy schedules? Um, it, it, it becomes a art form, if you will. Um, I'm very tenacious. You know, my, uh, my mom passed away in, in January died suddenly. Uh, Sorry to hear that. And um, yeah, just yesterday they buried her ashes and yesterday was rough, man. I hadn't cried in a few months and um, no, I know what you're it, saying. it was a rough day yesterday, but I went through um, two years ago, almost exactly to the day. My condolences, my man. Yeah. It, it's, you know, a mom. Um, yeah. She was my queen, man. Um, and, uh, her spirit lives in me because she was a short little lady, tenacious man. And <laughs> she didn't take no for an answer. And so I, I carry a lot of that today. You know, when someone tells me, no, you're too like, if, you know, when I got into firefighting, I was the smallest dude on the crew. Oh, you're, you're, you, you, you won't be able to do shit. I'll make up for it. Maybe I'll be quicker. Maybe I'll be faster. 
you you can always when some when someone tells you no i'm the type of person i'm going to do everything i can to prove you wrong and so uh bring you know bringing it back to your initial question you're going to get a lot of no's when you first start you know especially when i first when i had my youtube channel i had people coming up to me wanting to be on the show and, and it was a little easier that way once i lost that youtube channel it became harder because like who the fuck is this guy who 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 are you i never heard of you and it was just my tenacity of i'm going to i'm going to go for the big leagues i'm i want these bigger names i want to talk to them and you're going to get a lot of nose on the way and just brush them all, all right whatever but the more you reach out to people the way i look at it is you reach out to 10 people big names i'm expecting two or three will get back to me and out of those two and three maybe one will actually transpire into a show and so it's just a numbers game is the way i approach it um there's been times where I reach out to someone like James Corbett. I reached out to him years ago. I wanted to get him on years ago. And sometimes I'm like, damn, maybe he saw some of my shit and didn't want to come on. Maybe I'm too rough around the edges. And I start thinking the worst. Billed. You're too black yeah. for Corbett. <laughs> well, then it, it was funny because Corbett re reached out to me. I had reached out to him like three times and nothing, nothing, nothing. And then out of the blue, like I wasn't expecting. He, he's like, hey, Weezy, I was... I don't know how this email, how I missed this email. I'm so sorry. This is a little late, but I'm still, you know, I'm happy to do your show. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? That, that was huge. He That's reached cool, out to man. me. You know, I had given up. I, I had tried several times and to no luck. So my my advice to you or anyone else aspiring to, to have a show is just be tenacious and, and keep reaching out. Uh, some people do like a generic uh, script you know, and they send that out to a lot of people and see what happens. I take a more personal approach. I'll take time. I'll, I'll let them know, look, uh, I listen to you do this show and that show, and I would love to talk to you. I I, I, I personalize it. And so I, I think that that grabs, you know, prospective folks' attention that way, you know, Um and I work a lot, man. I, I, I work 70 to 90 hours a week. Um, and so this shit's hard to me, hard for me a, a lot of the times. But um, the, the awesome thing is when you start getting a little bit of a following, you start having awesome people around you, awesome mods that help you carry the show, do some of the little work that... There's no fucking way I could do all this shit by myself. You know, I I have a lot, a lot of help. Um, and and that's been awesome. It, it's been it's been awesome. But reaching out to people it, in it, given the, the amount of hours I work, I'm limited to, to only doing shows on Saturdays. That's really the only sure times I, I have to do shows. And so sometimes that that's also plays into um, not making shows with other guests because they might maybe only be able to do during the weekdays, for example, or, you know, they don't do Saturdays. And so that limits me as well. But if you take the positive approach, so maybe I'm blackpilled on other shit, but when it comes to this kind of shit, I, I, I have more of a positive outlook and if something doesn't work out, then shit, I'll just try again or or try some other shit. And sometimes shit falls through. Like today I was supposed to do a show uh, with Zoe. Uh, apparently there was a time zone differential. Uh, I said 5 p.m. Eastern. She thought it was 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, so there was some lost in translation stuff, I, I suppose. And that happens. Yeah. Can't. You can't put your head down. Uh, you just got to keep trying. And at the end of the day, if you have a passion for this, if, if your mind is 
in the right place, it's going to work out. You know, I, I never envisioned, like I said earlier, talking to some of these people. Corey is a good homie of mine. I talked to him. I've had many podcasts with him, but I've talked I've or I've spoke with him over the phone just during work, just shooting the shit. He's my homie now. And uh, same thing with Steve. They're, 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 they're friends of mine. And like I said, even, even James will email me every now and then. And it's awesome that I've been able to make friends with, with some of these people that I, I, I looked up to, you know, I, I'd listen to their shit. Um, it, it's real. It's also funny how, <laughs> um, I'm still a nemesis to Mr. Atwood. Someone I, I, I long ago, years ago left that shit, but just a few weeks ago, one of my friends uh, uh, emailed me or messaged me, dude, Atwood is still talking about us. Uh, this is my friend Chancer. He's from Scotland. Him and I were the ones that brought his ass down and exposed him. Like, uh, if you put in hashtag daddygate on oh. YouTube or anywhere, yeah. hashtag daddygate, we named our whole saga of exposing his ass as daddygate. We even made a YouTube channel called the daddygate podcast. Uh, but my, my buddy Chancer um, messaged me, dude, Sean is still talking about it. He went on this podcast. Uh, this guy has over 100,000 subscribers on the show that Sean was on. And he was asking him about that shit from a few years ago. And sh sure enough, Sean calls my buddy and I uh, the trolls. And, and <laughs> he, he spins this fucking bullshit that we're hired by black ops to bring him down because he's exposing pedophiles bitch you were caught scamming a adult worker and he made her a gofundme and collected five thousand pounds for, for her and he made it he made her out to be as someone that was abused and, and poor little girl meanwhile we we found out he was banging her out and just hoeing her around uh, oh, like Andrew Tate style. Me. Nice. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Nice. A and and so this guy still has the audacity to show up on people shows and 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 call me. He won't say our names. Uh, he'll just call us uh, the trolls. Um, a a and so I I take that with a badge of honor. Uh, you know, he 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 celebrated the day I got kicked off of YouTube. He. Made he made a video. It's got like twenty five thousand views, and that's all they sp they spent like an hour. Him in this fucking tranny, uh, this old man dressed in drag. Uh, they were gloating and celebrating the the fall of Wheezy. I don't know if you noticed one of my intros. It has Sean Atwood. Um, I I play it every now and then, but on one of my intros, Sean said on the live stream, down with Wheezy, down with what is truth. Like he was so happy. It was like he scored a touchdown when he got me kicked off of YouTube. Oh, uh, wow. But all that, that, and then the fact that I'm talking to guests that I've listened to, you know, for a long time pre previous to me having my own show has been truly humbling man and, and and i i've taken it all in the good the bad and the ugly of it uh <laughs> and it's i god what was your original question it was just like what was the oh how do you how do you get these people to give up their time oh give up their time <laughs> which you it, already answered it I just let you. Yeah, going and you going just and going. you just email them. You yeah, you, you give ask. them your you know yeah. Just ask, just ask, and and you got to be tenacious. Some of these people are hard to um, get a hold of, and so there's a lot of research. Okay, do they have a Twitter? Do they have a Facebook? Uh, do they have a website? Uh, you you got to hit every avenue. The other thing that has greatly helped now that I've I'm starting to get traction again. It's like a second emergence that I'm I'm experiencing at the moment. Uh, the podcast is growing. The audio podcast is um, growing every damn week. The other is the networking you do with other people. You know, uh, for example, 
uh, you mentioned, you know, I, I'd like to have Corey Hughes on, on the show. I, dude, I could set you up. And this is, it's networking with other fellow podcasters. You know, I often say this in our community, if you will, we're all different. We all bring something different to the table. And some people may gravitate to this person because of this. Some people may gravitate to that person because of that. And that's okay. If you start to get jealous over that, then this isn't the spot for you. And, and, and so my attitude and what I love about our communities and our friends is that there's no competing with each other. Rather, we're trying to grow each other. You know, like, hey, talk to this person. Let me set you up with this. You talk to this person and then and you give each other high fives um, and all that shit. It, it, once you start viewing it as, as this other show as a competitor, that's when you really shouldn't be in the space because you're not in it for the, the right reasons anymore. Um, because in the end, people should be exposed to everyone. And if they happen to like someone else better, like there could be people well, that listen to me for a while and maybe like, you know what, I'm getting tired of this shit. But now that I listen to this, I might listen to that. And that's OK. You know what I'm saying? They're, that's just what it is. Uh, it's like not everyone is going to like Escargo. Not everyone's going to like Carne Asada. There's different shit, different tastes for everyone, man. And and that's what in our community we don't all speak the same shit. We don't all cover the same shit. We come at, we may come from it from different angles, and that's okay. And, and I think the more people get exposed to it, the better overall it is for everyone else. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Yeah, absolutely. And <clears throat> the other thing, the other advantage that I think we have over the rest of the media space. Uh, in in addition to not having that competitive mentality necessarily is because of the fact that we don't have that competitive mentality. It's more likely that our work is going to pro proliferate and last into the future in order to educate future generations of human beings, much more so than what the mainstream is going to have survive into the future and definitely more than, than what I think the, even the mammies, uh, as David, Ike likes to call them, uh, are going to have survive into the future. I think our community, uh, has a real chance to establish a lasting legacy in the media space. And it's because of the fact that we're willing to help each other out instead of competing with one another. I agree. Yeah, 100 um, percent. Yeah, especially during these trying times of censorship, extreme censorship, if we don't have each other's back, we're, we might as well just lay, <laughs> lay down and just give up. You know what I'm saying? But our voices, as minuscule or as big as they may be, uh, are doing something, you know, I, I, I get comments quite frequently saying, God damn, you're covering some shit that I never knew about, or God damn, I didn't think I never heard anyone talking about this or that or whatever. Um, and knowledge is power, but it just depends what kind of knowledge you're getting. Are you getting this processed artificial shit from the mainstream? Or are you getting organic, you know, fruitful knowledge? <laughs> that's that's where you really have to, you know, you have to come to that crossroads and 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 decide and and choose that pill. <laughs> yeah. No, I I think you're absolutely right, and I like the the processed food versus uh, organic analogy because I think that's that's about as appropriate as you can get. Because when, when you no. look at what the indoctrination machine has fed us from birth, it's all ultra processed, right? It's been edited and re-edited and re-edited and reconfigured and reimagined and, and re-whatevered 
until they get it just exactly right so that it's going to go in with the least amount of resistance. Whereas, you know, what we're doing, being more organic, yeah, it's it's probably going to be messy. It might smell a little funny every now and then, but you you can believe that it's going to be more nutritious for you in the end, even though it, it might, you know, might be a little bit weird in the uh, in the process. So... Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean that's part of the the psyop is making things seem easier, more tasty, more scrumptious. Uh, sometimes the better shit isn't as tasty or as scrumptious, but it's a hell of a lot better for you. Yeah. All right, I know uh, you've got something else going on tonight. So I'm not going to eat up all of your time this hour. I just want a little bit more of it because I have one more question for you, my friend. Uh, about a yes, year, sir. about a year ago, uh, you interviewed the man known as John Cullen with the the ball cap and the glasses and the black shirt and that whole motif going on. Uh, what was your impression of him? from that interview well that he has climbed that pot so I, I think would help too i i tagged our conversation on a twitter post and it got like fuck i don't even know what it is how many impressions now it's like well over ten thousand. Mm -hmm. i think maybe eleven thousand impressions uh and that episode is my most downloaded episode now uh, of all my podcasts. I'm like, holy shit. Hmm. Uh, my impression of him, if I'm being honest, I like the guy. I do have questions. Uh, you know, his thesis on Las Vegas, I agree with most of it. I kind of get lost or he loses me when he tries to say that uh, MBS is an okay guy and a straight shooter. He was just taking out the garbage. He does lose me with that because I don't ascribe to that. I think MBS is a piece of shit as well. The motherfucker had Jamal Khashoggi butchered. And, and, yeah, he's, and Mr. he's a gangster Cohen. just like anybody else. Hell yeah. yeah. And so that's that would probably be my biggest... Um, what would, how would I call it? Where he lose where he loses me on his thesis regarding Las Vegas that MBS is a good dude because I don't I don't think so. Um, I I definitely agree that Las Vegas was all bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just too many signs. You could focus on the two uh, uh, bodyguards. I focused a lot of them. Jesus Campos, the the Mexican American security guard. Uh, Look completely different from the guy, you know, the the security guard at the casino, and then two weeks later shows up on the Ellen DeGeneres show uh, as a shorter, fat guy. Uh, when on the original pictures of him, he he looked like he was like six foot one, athletic build type of guy, and then he shows up on Ellen DeGeneres as some little pudgy fuck, um, and, and it. It, it was funny. I, I watched the Ellen uh, interview because I got I got balls deep into that Las Vegas shit as well. And she originally had the comments turned on on the YouTube and everyone was calling out the bullshit. It, 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 it was so obviously orchestrated how she was feeding them the floor plans. And, and it was all scripted nonsense. And um, so it, that episode was great, I mean, and I could see why it was downloaded quite a bit, and people enjoyed it. But um, he does. <laughs> if you follow him on Twitter, uh, he, he he does think highly of himself, which I guess you know that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I, I think he does good work. Um, I don't agree with everything he does, or or maybe. Um, you know, thinking you're the man on COVID. I don't know if I agree with that statement. 
Uh, but other than that, I mean, I, I, I just, I, I, I do think he could be an honest person. I mean, it, it, I've seen people say he's a psyops as well. Uh, I don't know if I, if I take that step, um, because he hasn't covered quite a bit of shit. Uh, is I, I just think it's his, the way he presents himself that might be off putting to some people and therefore then make other assumptions about him. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can, I can, uh, totally see how, how somebody would, uh, draw that conclusion just based on observance of him. Cause I've been, I've been watching his work for a number of years as well. Uh, pretty much from, I would say about 2020 up until, um, well, present day. Uh, interesting thing is he blocked me on Twitter, uh, a oh, few shit. weeks back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cause I, I asked him a couple of questions that I guess he didn't know the answer to. Uh, and, yeah. and instead of, uh, you know, trying to actually learn the answer to these questions to gain the knowledge that, that might be attached to him, uh, he, he chose instead, uh, for an ad hominem attack and then, and then blocked me before I could respond. So, oh no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was real disappointing. It was because <laughs> again, I, I have enjoyed a lot of his work. I like you. Yeah agree with a lot of, you know, what he brought to the table in regards to the Vegas shooting. Because, you know, the stuff that I've I've gone and checked myself, I'm like, holy shit, he's right. Yeah. You know? It, it's Yeah, uh, no, he he's done he's done a lot of good stuff. I just think it's kind of going back to what I had previously stated. You start to get a little following and you may start to get a bigger head and maybe unfortunately maybe a little bit of that has gone to his head where he thinks he's some kind of rock star um and you should I, I don't agree with it but i guess to each their own for everyone um you know i i try to stay more grounded doesn't make i'm not saying that that makes me better you know that's just me you know and he does a lot of good work. I'm not shit talking to him in that regard. He does a lot of good work. It's just, he just chooses to carry himself a little different, far different than how I would. And it works out for him and shit works out for me, you know? So it's just, again, different flavors, different stuff for different folks, different strokes for different folks is what they say. Yeah, absolutely. Although I would, uh, I would give uh, our friend John Cullen a piece of advice: uh, leave the the rock star lifestyle to the actual uh, rock stars, and we'll cover it. <laughs> we'll cover it here on uh, on Liberty yeah. Radio. Well, Weezy, it has been fantastic talking with you today, my friend. Uh, let the folks know where they can connect with your work. Well. You can follow me on pretty much all the po podcast platforms. Just search What is Truth Podcast by Wheezy. And preferably, you can, uh, the Spotify, you can see all my videos are, you can watch them on Spotify. So that's nice. Uh, and if you enjoy the show, always leave a review. You can leave reviews on uh, Podcast Addict as well, Apple, iTunes. That helps the algorithm. Uh, which once you get deplatformed, is all the little help you can get, you know, and those little gestures of little reviews are awesome. Unfortunately, when I make those call outs, it's like the fucking people that I pissed off on some episode. Those are the ones that come out. Oh, I don't like you, Wheezy. You really hurt me there, brother. I'm going to give you a one star. <laughs> those are the sons of bitches that come out in full force. But I always, you know. I, I don't ask for money. I don't ask for any of that shit, but I do ask for some reviews if you can. Um, and then if you want the video platforms, I know there's people that listen to audio, the audio shows, but some people will want to see the videos, you know, maybe, Ooh, well, how does this person look like? You know, they want to put a face to the voice or whatever. Uh, if I get a guest that they don't know about or never heard of, you know, they want to see them. Uh, you can follow me on Rockfin. 
Odyssey, now on Rumble. I never mentioned the YouTube channel, but you can find my YouTube channel. I only post clips there. I don't really fuck around with that shit. Um, I, I, I like to stick with platforms that actually have a semblance of free speech. And so that's where I carry over my talents to. But uh, no, I, I want to thank you, Mr. Drizzle. It was a pleasure. And I definitely need to have you back on the show, man. I, I always enjoy these conversations with you. And anytime you want to reach out to someone or whatever, man, if I can help you, man, just just, just holler at me and I'll, I'll try to do what I can. Well, I appreciate it's all about networking. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and I'll, I'll let you know, I'm not the type of person who is uh, going to lean on their network uh, in order to make it grow. Uh, but, you know, if I encounter the, uh, the odd occasion where I just can't seem to get somebody, you know, get their attention and I know you can, absolutely. Uh, I'll, uh, yeah. I'll reach out to you for the assist on that one. But I appreciate you it's taking awesome. time out of your day to uh, to spend it with us because I know you got uh, more fun things to do coming up here in just a couple of minutes, don't you? Yeah, I need to start drinking my water because it, it's going to involve heavy heavy doses of alcohol. So I need to I need to get my liver ready. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, you don't you don't have a ban <laughs> on the uh, greenery, do you? I I would imagine you don't, since uh, Steve is usually a part of the festivities. Uh, I wish I did. Maybe I'll have a rhetorical one uh, in spirit. There you go. I, 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 I just, I have my house for sale and I'm living in a townhome and my neighbor is a goddamn cop. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. <laughs> just my luck. So, you know, um, I've done it once and, and, and uh, he didn't say shit, but he gave me like a look like, Bro, what are you doing? <laughs> wow. But yeah, best not to otherwise, the bear, I you guess. know, I'll, I'll have one in spirit. There you go. There you yeah. go. Thanks again, my brother. Absolutely, man. Anytime you want to come back on, just let me know. Hell yeah, dude. I, I love it, man. I, we'll definitely do it. And, and likewise, maybe we'll do a swap cast. Hell, I'll ask That's you awesome. right now. I, I enjoyed this, this conversation. Do you mind if I put it on my podcast player? No, nah, go for it as well. Go for Hell it. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. do that. I should have. Yeah, I, I enjoyed uh, this. Should have everything published uh, tomorrow sometime. So yeah, wherever yeah. you wherever you grab it from, man, spread it to every corner of the fucking interwebs. That's what I always tell people. Exactly. That's I I say the same thing, man. It, when people ask me, oh, can I use it, dude? Anything of mine's out there. Go ahead. I don't care. Use okay. it. Well, it's, Make your we own channel with it. I don't care. Yeah, we don't we don't believe in intellectual property at Liberty Radio. So everything is fair game, including what there we produce. Yeah. I'm the same way, my brother. Hell yeah. Awesome. My man. Well, go my ahead kindred and, uh, spirit animal. There you go. Go ahead and, <laughs> and uh, get us ready for uh, all the action that's about to come up. And I'll uh, shoot me a link. I'll be over there. Hell yeah. Right on. All right, my brother. Thank you so much, my man. Absolutely. Much love to everyone. All right. All right. We will be uh, back on Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, your regularly scheduled Liberty Radio broadcast. Uh, I, I hope we're going to have new music on Wednesday night. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet, but then again, I've been on vacation all week, so I guess I'll have to uh, start doing some work here in, in the next couple of days or whatever. Uh, but in just a few minutes, uh, I'm going to be hanging out with the boys over on Wheezy's channel for UFC 300. So if you're not doing anything better on a Saturday night, and I know you're not because Liberty Radio is not on the air. Maybe you want to head over and join us. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>